Hey, and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be looking at the Dynamo Player. Now, it's gonna be a basic overview of what the Dynamo Player is, what it does, and some of the settings that you might wanna be aware of when you start getting into Dynamo that deals with packages, file paths, all that. It should be pretty quick and pretty simple, but these are some things that I think you should know when you get into Dynamo. So, Dynamo itself is a visual program built within Revit that allows you to manipulate the Revit API or parts of Revit that you wouldn't necessarily normally get to do. Uh, Dynamo itself can do whatever menial task that you would like to do in Revit, whether it be move a wall or you know add a door, but it could start to get into some automation, which is where I am fascinated with it. And you'll see most of what I'm trying to do with Dynamo and the, the scripts I'm making revolve around how Dynamo can help automate or progress and push the limits of Revit itself. So we'll, we'll get into that a little further, but Dynamo in the Manage tab, you've got the Dynamo and the Dynamo Player. The difference between Dynamo and the Dynamo Player, Dynamo itself is where you'll build the scripts, produce them, save them, and the Dynamo Player is simply a player. Like imagine you hit play, you hit run, and whatever you made in Dynamo, the script you made in Dynamo, is played, it runs. And you can build in specific user inputs, outputs, whatever you want for that specific script. What we can expect from the Dynamo player is something pretty basic. And the idea of the Dynamo player is that it is something simple so that people who know how to use Dynamo can build the scripts and people who don't know how to use Dynamo can still run and use those scripts. And that is the great appeal of the Dynamo Player and why I'm such an advocate for it and for making your scripts a part of the Dynamo Player, specifically for the player itself. So I'll click on Dynamo Player and I've, I've done nothing. I've just, this is just the default player. And all of these scripts are gonna ship with Revit. So as soon as you install Revit, you'll get all these scripts some of them are helpful. I can't say that I've used them all that much, but you can begin to see where they might be helpful. You know, it would be nice to calculate the total length of the selected lines. You know, if you have a, a lot of lines, you need to know the total length. It's those kinds of things that Dynamo can begin to be helpful with. Select all tagged elements not tagged in the view. That's, that's great. Maybe you want to do that, maybe you don't. I don't know. But these I would use as more as an example and play with these and you'll get an idea of how the player works and how scripts work with the player. Uh, a basic rundown of the player itself is you've got the script name, you have a, a big play button over here which will immediately run the script. Now a lot of times scripts will not be able to ru be run necessarily without specific inputs and that's where you're able to edit inputs. So if I go to, let's go to add levels above selected level. Well. Let's go to edit inputs. My guess is we'll have to select a level. <laughs> and it'll take you to a different menu within the script. You can see at the top, add levels above. It's the, the name of the, the script itself. You can see inputs are needed. And then here we can see all of our inputs. Number of new levels to create. It's, it's a basic slider. I don't quite find this that useful when, it, when you could just type in a, a number there and be, be done with it. Then you're prompted to select a level because you, you want to add levels above that selected level. And then again, the distance from that selected. So you can see how all of this would begin to work itself out. So now after you add all of the information that you want, all, all the inputs, then this is going to serve as your new play button. And after you do that, you will get a result. I'll go ahead and choose that after I select the input I'm it's waiting for me to select in Revit so now what it's it's actually waiting for me to select a level and I'm gonna reveal hidden because I believe the levels are hidden and I'm not able to reveal hidden at that time so I'll reveal hidden right now and there are my levels I'll select and then I will choose a level and now I can see my play button shows up again it's no longer asking me for inputs I can hit play and I've got my 12 new levels each that are 10 feet offset from level two from each other. And you can see all the new 
all the new levels there with their each element ID. Everything is dandy. So that's an example of what you could use Dynamo for. I'm gonna undo that. After you run a script, you could actually undo it. And a lot of people are scared to run certain scripts in the Dynamo player for that reason. So if I look at the forward here, you could see my dyna that Dynamo script there. That script itself is what I just ran. Now it doesn't tell you exactly what script it was or what it did or anything, but still it's good that you have the option to undo <laughs> because <I'll laughs> you can build some scripts that can do quite a lot in Revit. So I'm gonna go back to the Dynamo player once again. And besides the play button and the edit inputs, you, there is an edit in Dynamo. So you could go directly from this point to edit that script in Dynamo. And just because we were dealing with this one here, let's go ahead and edit in Dynamo. And in that, at this point, it will open Dynamo and it will reveal the entire script that was used to build that particular, all the nodes, sorry, that were used to build that particular script. Now, they're, they're nice and they put a note and as far as to what this script does and a few steps built in along the way to see what these different nodes do and how the script works all together. So if you're trying to learn Dynamo, these are some good scripts to start with because Autodesk actually does a good job of laying out what nodes are here, why they're there, and how they function. That's an example of one of the example scripts. So what I'm going to do now is go over these buttons here at the top. There's a refresh button, so after you edit one of these scripts here, you'll want to refresh it, or you could close the player and reopen it. That's the same thing, essentially. There's a view current folder, and all this is doing is going to take you to the location where all of these scripts in the player appear. And that's helpful to know because you obviously have to save these somewhere. And the final button here is, it would allow you to browse to a new folder. Basically, if you want to change where this Dynamo player is pulling from, you can change that. And so now I'm actually going to change this location because the default is it's in Revit's folder in Dynamo, it's, it's kind of wonky. so. We can go about changing that right now. Um, I'm gonna go to a different drive in general, and I will go ahead and make a new folder, and I'll call this Dynamo, Dynamo Scripts. And then I've got nothing here, so I'm going to start saving my Dynamo scripts in this folder, and as I do that, they will begin to populate there. Again, very simple, good to know. So now at this point, I'm going to go back to Dynamo, Dynamo there, and let's go ahead and put Revit over here. And at this point, there's a couple settings in Dynamo that we want to be aware of before we start. You know, adding packages, making scripts, saving them. We want to make sure we're squared away with that. So go into the settings and manage node and package paths. So this is another path to be aware of. It's a default path. So if you do nothing and you are working on one PC, this is going to be totally fine. It, you'd never have to worry about this. But th basically this is the path where all the Dynamo packages that you download and utilize for all your scripts are going to be saved and it's in your local file in the app data folder so if I click on the three dots I can see exactly where that is and the packages folder so something that you could do and this is something that I've done within my firm is we've created a separate path you can add paths by hitting the plus sign here imagine that and you can create a different path which allows you to have packages in a different place. Now you might ask, why do you want to do that? And honestly, I don't do that to have packages in a second place, but uh, I have that. So if everyone is, everyone in the office or in the firm is looking at the same location, be it a network drive. So we have a network drive that I have chosen as my package folder. So as I download a package and I use that package to build a script, everyone who uses that script will also be able to use the package 
because everyone is pointing at the same folder looking at the same packages so if you're looking to have multiple people use the scripts in Revit at the same time and utilize all that you will have to change this path to a network path and make sure all your packages are there so everyone can utilize it and you can have multiple paths here so maybe you want to access a local drive build scripts test them out and then change the drive or change the path to the network drive so whenever you place that script on the network it's used it, it's really however you want to do it but just be aware that you can have as many paths as you want but the top path is where Dynamo will be looking for the packages so I would just set that now set it and forget it if you're on a single PC like I am right now I'm, I'm just building these at home for videos and all of I'm, I'm just gonna download packages into this basic folder I don't need to do anything special and then accept the changes and you're good to go I, I think that will do it for the Dynamo player I'm gonna start getting into more scripts here now that we've gone over the Dynamo player and a couple of the new features with Dynamo 2.3 I'm working with Dynamo 2.3 and Revit 2020.2 I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please demolish that like button. It really helps me a lot. And please subscribe if you enjoyed it as well. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you in the next one.